learning team, during this activity, we want you to practice like you would in a normal scenario in the workplace, follow your local protocols. And what the goal is, is to perform high performance CPR, or high quality CPR, which is identified as pushing at least two inches on the chest for compressions, pushing at a rate of 100 to 120 uh, compressions per minute, not leaning on the chest, so allowing full chest recoil, and not excessively ventilating the patient. Lastly, you'll note that I have two stopwatches. I'll be gathering the chest compression fraction, which is the percent of the total rest time where active chest compressions are going on. We've pre-identified Deb as the team leader. She's the captain on the fire engine, so she'll hand out roles to each of you. She'll be in charge of the overall event. So with that being said, we're going to re read the scenario. Deb, you respond to a call at a local high school for a 65-year-old female physics teacher that has suddenly collapsed in the teacher's lounge. You're the captain on a four-person BLS engine and a two-person BLS ambulance arrives shortly thereafter. There is a hands-only CPR being performed by a bystander and the downtime is about four minutes. Okay, any questions? No. No? Okay, Deb, go ahead and sign your rolls. Okay, JoJo will be our bystander doing hands-only. Jeremy, can you come in and assess and take over for the hands only? Okay. Jeff, can you come in and be the second compressor and bring the AED on scene? Okay. And Joe, can you be the ventilator? Yes. Ryan, can you be relief on compressions as well as help with ventilations if needed? And Steve, can you come in about a minute later and be our reporter? Just let me know when you come on scene. Okay, okay let's go. Good job, sir. Let me go and take over for you. Thank goodness you're here. Checking for pulse. Looking for breathing. No pulse, no breathing. Resuming compressions. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Heart rhythm. Stay clear, patient. Do not touch the patient. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. Press shock in three, two, now. one. Clear. Shock delivered. Begin CPR. Joe, are those ventilations going okay? The first two went in okay. Um, probably could use some help with the mask. Ryan, can you come in and hook up the oxygen, please, and then help Joe with sealing the mask? I hooked up oxygen to the back valve mask and turned it up to 15 liters per minute. Steve, is the ALS unit on the way? Dispatch has already said that they've got six to eight minutes out. Okay. Analyzing heart rhythm. Analyzing, stay clear. Do not touch the patient. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. Shock Press three, the orange two, button one. now. Stay clear. Shock delivered. Begin CPR. Sir, can you give me an idea of what's happened this morning? So we were just talking about how education has changed over the years. Then she had this funny look in her eyes, and she just collapsed to the ground. I yelled for help. Someone called 911. I think they're getting an AED. So I just started doing chest compressions on her for about like two to three minutes until you guys got here. Okay, so she was acting fine this morning. She didn't complain to anybody of anything. No, no chest not that pain. I'm aware of. She was perfectly normal. Okay, all right. If you could uh, stay close, I may have some more questions for you in a little bit after we get started. Okay. Okay. Good switch. Joe, those ventilations going in okay with the switch? They're fine. How's the oxygen doing? 
um, we still have enough. Um, if we um, we may need another bottle when the uh, ALS uh, crew arrives. Okay. Sir, mm -hmm. can you do us a favor and try to find out if there's any medical history? Okay. You can check with the school nurse or possibly the office. Particularly, we need to know if she has any medical history, any medical problems, any medications, and if she has any allergies. Okay, I'll do okay. that right now. And can you bring it back to me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good compressions. Good recoil. Ten seconds to analyze. Analyzing heart rhythm. Stay clear, patient. Do not touch the patient. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. Press the orange shock button three, now. Shock three, two, one. Clear. Shock delivered. Begin CPR. Steve, how are we doing on time? Doing really good on time. Looks like we'll have ALS here supposedly within about four to six minutes. Okay. Okay, it looks like she takes aspirin and nothing else really contraindicated. I don't see any allergies to medicine and no real medical history, uh, except for maybe high blood pressure. Okay, thank you, sir. If you could uh, hang around, we may need more, okay? Thank you. Good work team. Um, you know, part of our training is that we talk about how we performed and maybe where we could get better. We call it a debrief. So to start with, we'll, we'll talk about Deb, you as the team leader. Tell us what you encountered and how you dealt with it as the case progressed. Okay, um, we had a bystander doing CPR and we, we came on, it was a 65 year old female with sudden collapse. There was uh, hands only being performed for four minutes. Had a four-person team and a two-person team arrive about the same time and they quickly came in and assessed and began compressions. We did a great job with minimizing interruptions and um, just kind of hovering over the chest as uh, we were waiting for analyze and then starting immediately after charging and, and shocking. Fortunately, we have an AED that allows us to do compressions during the charge and so I think that probably helped our time and I'm really looking forward to finding out what that was. The team did a good job of uh, minimizing rescue or fatigue so as soon as one got tired another one took over and there was just minimal interruptions which was really good and they worked it out amongst themselves at first kind of had to help them uh, recognize that but then they quickly kicked in which is very indicative of uh, systems of care and how we work together as a different team from different ambulances very good so part of team dynamics is communicating well knowing your role and your assignment very good joe um i had the airway had good compliance to start with. It did really help having somebody else that could hold the mask so that I could get good ventilations. Mm -hmm. Oxygen, we started to run low on oxygen. So we may want to consider having a bottle in our bag, especially if we're gonna be a long distance from the rig um, or ACLS is gonna be quite a ways away. Very good. So Steve, what was your role? Well, I was the recorder for this event, and I came in about, oh, a minute after this all started. Now, I think that the app caught pretty much all of the information for documentation that we needed. Now, in the first minute, we'd have to use the AED to pull that documentation, so we'd have that. One thing I think for the future, I think it really is beneficial to do that pre-assignment of roles. You know, it, it just seems that it's going to be more beneficial for definitely my service. So. I think that I would want it to be where we either pre-assign those roles or it kind of goes along with where you're seated on the unit. So Deb, 
part of quality of resuscitation is looking at the effect on the patient and trying to make adjustments and stride to you know, improve the outcomes. So was there a way that you, you know, assessed the resuscitation effort and mm -hmm. the patient's response to that? Okay, as a BLS unit, we have limited resources, so basically it's the teamwork involved, making sure that there's minimal interruptions, making sure that the compressions are deep enough, that uh, they're allowing for recoil, and just, just ensuring that overall that we try to do the best high quality CPR that we can do as a team, and as a team with the systems of care working together. Okay, so um, to put conclusion to this, um, from a debriefing perspective, we've gathered information, we've kind of analyzed the communication and the roles, and to summarize, some of the things that we may think about for future cases would be to potentially have a second oxygen tank available so that somebody didn't have to go to the apparatus and get one. Also, um, to pre-assign roles so that we kind of know what we're supposed to do when we arrive, we just kind of fall into the teamwork that's already being uh, performed and maybe look at how we can assess the patient's um, reaction to our care. Um, so I guess you're all waiting. Uh, yeah, yes. You know, at this point, your chest compression fraction, you were actively compressing the chest eight minutes and 12 seconds out of 10 minutes, which is 82%. Yay! So Go congratulations, team. very good.